Hello and welcome to Photography Out Loud. My name is Paul Davis and as always I'm joined with my colleague Joel Longbone. How are you doing today? You all right? Yeah, good, thank you. Shooting from home. Good. Shooting from home? Yes. <laughs> I was I looking think... back in that um that uh intro and I was like, oh, a haircut. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're both getting to that stage again now. It's just like where you can see oh. like how long we're into a in, into the lockdown of okay. looking looking at the looking at the haircuts yeah so we've got another exciting episode for you today uh, everyone joining in and um, so we're going to do some news and updates for you just in a second and then for the second half of the episode we're going to be jumping back on with our um we what did we call it <laughs> beginners tutorial Beginners tutorials. Yeah, we've decided on the wording tutorials. <laughs> so yes, we're going to uh, continuation with the uh, beginners tutorials, which uh, which we're really looking forward to. Uh, yeah. We love sort of uh, helping and educating as uh, as much as we, we had, possibly can. And we had great feedback from uh, last week as well, didn't we? We certainly did. Yeah, it was uh, it was awesome. Yeah. So and but it was something that uh, people have been asking about for a while. So it's uh, it, it's nice that we could. Uh, that we could finally offer it after sort of planning it and putting it in motion. So uh, it's great. So yes, uh, sort of later on in this video, we will be talking uh, a little bit about uh, the different types of cameras uh, that you can potentially buy um, on, on your photography journey uh, and you know the advantages and disadvantages of them. Uh, we'll be looking into the best way, hints and tips to hold the camera. Um, and also looking at how your Zoom affects your image as well. So uh, looking forward to speaking about that. Uh, but first, uh, we're going to touch on a little bit of updates that uh, that we've got for you. Oh, yeah, that's true. If I uh, find the document. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote I'll it all down. <laughs> yeah, um, so we don't often mention software, but um, Affinity is like a really good piece of software um, from Serif. And if you don't want to spend very much because you don't like the um, subscription uh, side of um, Adobe in terms of Photoshop and Lightroom, or you like the fact that you can um, use it on iPad as well, you can use um, Photoshop and Lightroom on iPad, but slightly different. Whereas Affinity seems to be quite similar on the iPad and on the desktop or laptop version. But they've just bought out um, an upgrade um, which looks really good so if you haven't or you've not checked um, then download affinity and also make sure it's upgraded because for the money i don't think you can go wrong to be honest if you don't want to spend too much on editing software then affinity is pretty easy to use pretty easy to learn and there's lots yeah. of people out there using it so well worth a look um, and I think it, it, it's got that it, it's got that sort of following now as well because one thing that uh, and I, we're very much in the <clears throat> Adobe sort of uh, wheelhouse when we do our editing here, um, yeah. but once again it's just because uh, we do a lot and it's what we're used to. Um, but it always used to be the case when we, you know, people used to say to us, or oh, what do you recommend? It kind of always used to be, you know, Photoshop or Lightroom because there's that backup and support from users and things like that. Yeah. Uh, the nice thing that we're seeing from Affinity at the moment is that, that that user base has grown so much and that support online, not only from uh, not only from Affinity, but from all the users and forums that you can access as well. So uh, it's a really nice software to check out on that latest update is is looking very nice yep <laughs> um so yeah definitely check that out um i've just noticed in the comment david good more good afternoon good evening david um affinity is on 90 day free trial which is great um and it's also half price at the moment um i hadn't realized they'd reintroduced the uh, half price i know they did it uh, last year at the beginning of lockdown so that's uh, mm -hmm. great news so thank you for that david um so you have no reason not to give it a try <laughs> Uh, we don't make any commission off it, just so you know. There are other yeah, there's, editing there's software just, available. <laughs> it's just a recommendation. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also, if you are uh, bored at home um, and you um, are interested, I um, saw that uh, the RPS, the Royal Photographic Society, has put all of their journals online for free. That's wow. 165 years worth. <laughs> I looked at the first one, I was like, this is quite interesting. But there's not a lot of photographs in it. 
if at all. There's a few diagrams, so it's quite interesting to see a journal about photography without actually any photographs. But definitely worth a look if you're looking for inspiration or you just want to do some reading, um, definitely check that out. It's on the RPS website, so have a look at that. Also, also, we have Paul Sanders coming on next Friday. So Wee. we're going to go through the project that we uh, had last year and go through that and uh, see see what uh, we received. Um, and we'll be working on uh, the ideas for how we can uh, put that into some sort of exhibition and book, hopefully. So um, tune in next week to see uh, uh, Paul, or as some of you may know, Marty. Um, <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and watch the videos from last year. Um, I, think it it's, has... I think at some point he was referred to as Bottom Paul, but I don't even know where that came from. Yeah, were you Bottom Paul or was he Bottom Paul? I can't remember. I can't remember. There's I one feel of like that was Bottom a... Paul. Yeah, why was that? Oh, it was with um, Jonathan Critchley when we were oh, doing the uh, yeah. <laughs> preparation. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's where we were on the screen. I was at the bottom of the screen, so I just got labelled right. Bottom Paul. <laughs> less um and also paul and i and sarah have been uh, having a chat this week um about the future and um, because uh, may will be here before we realize it <laughs> um and we don't think obviously we're going to be able to have our normal may show so um we we have some ideas that we've already started uh, looking into and inquiring with our manufacturers etc and uh, some photographers so we've got we've got something exciting lined up so if we manage to get it all lined up uh, all will be revealed in the not too distant future all being well um obviously it's subject to the situation that we find ourselves in um but fingers crossed we have something very exciting for you um so keep your eyes peeled um the dates are the 28th to the 31st of may so that's the uh, last bank holiday in may like it normally would be um, so yeah, keep those dates free because we'll be producing some content that hopefully will be uh, interesting and exciting and different to what we normally produce. So put that in your diary, keep your eyes peeled. We'll, uh, we'll stick it on Facebook next week, hopefully, um, uh, an event so you can follow that and uh, keep up to date with all the updates. Um, so yeah, that should be exciting. Paul's like, I mean, you, why does you Joel say, come up with these ideas? You say exciting. <laughs> And though, though the obviously we're still speaking in very cryptic manners here, so an apologies for anyone watching. But when Joel says exciting, my first sort of thing that I think of is, oh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> but then hey, I came around to the idea, and uh, th the things that we've got planned, depending on you know what we can do at the time. Uh, obviously, we always like to think very positively. Um, is um is is gonna be in your words really exciting <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we, we we went uh, we went big for our other shows and we went, pulled out all the stops and uh may was big and then november was even bigger so but we wanted to switch it up a bit so we've got some uh really interesting and exciting yeah. cool. <laughs> uh, ideas lined up um so I'll, I'll... yeah and we kind of be we, we like to be first to the game with these things as well, don't we? So, yeah. uh, you know, it, we we're the first to do an online uh, photography virtual show. Um, so, you know, we want to be the first at doing something something that's bigger and better as well. So, uh, yeah. can't wait to that. But uh, we will update uh, everyone um, uh, as as and when we actually can. So. Uh, give you as much information as as we do when we when we have it so yeah very yeah. much looking forward so. and and also along with that with our 75 years of uh, know, being around yeah. um we're hopefully going to tie it in with that and the projects that we've got uh in store for our 75. so uh, like we were speaking about last um week if you've got any um images of the shop or anybody involved in the shop for the past 75 years uh, send them in to us um if you've got any interesting images at all that have something to do with 75 years or photography or Cambrian, uh, let us know because we want to uh, build upon um, these uh, ideas we've got of like, so sorry, um, working from home is great. <laughs> My son's shouting to his mum, <laughs> I want snacks. 
Um, so yeah, um, anything to do with 75 years that we can add into our uh, potential exhibition and book, etc., then uh, send them through to us because we would like to make it interesting. Um, we'd like to kind of uh, capture the passion of photography that we as a company have. Um, and I think you have to be passionate about photography to last 75 years. <laughs> um, so send it into us and we're working on some uh, some merchandise as well so um, hopefully that will be um uh, coming in the next few months ready for you guys um to uh show your love and support for us um, yeah. so that'll be cool um, gotta love me some merch gotta love yeah. it gotta love it <laughs> exactly um yeah i think that's all of the exciting news and uh yeah i think that's it um oh uh sonia says hi lads good to see you i bought my affinity last week oh that's really oh, cool brilliant. Uh, let us know what you think of it uh sonia it'd be interesting to hear your feedback um yeah, definitely. also andrew howe says good afternoon snowden curtain says hi to you both uh hello to both of you oh gareth morn says good to see you guys good to see you too or at least virtually in your profile picture <laughs> i don't think that's you in your profile picture is it uh so <laughs> good to see you um and uh good afternoon guys uh slightly late but great to see you Hello, Steve. Good to see you too. Uh, always good when uh, we see comments pop up in the uh, the comments section. So um, keep them coming. That's brilliant. Well, wow, that's uh, it for the news. Um, and we'll start with the training. Ooh. Hello. Uh, I've said hello, but for this section of the video, hello. Uh, if you're just tuning in, my name is Paul Davis and I'm with my colleague Joel Longbone. And hello. today uh, we're starting the uh, second episode of our uh, tutorial that we're doing for beginners photography. So I got the name right there. So <laughs> that's always it's always good. And uh, the first thing that we're going to look at talking about is uh, uh, the different cameras that are available. So uh, if you're starting off with photography, um, you may have a camera or you may be looking to upgrade or this might be something that's uh, running around in the back of your head. Um, you're thinking of potentially upgrading or, you know, do I need to upgrade uh, if I want to you know, get more into photography? So it's sort of things like this. Obviously, different cameras have different sort of advantages and disadvantages. Uh, and these are the things that we just wanted to, you know, start a conversation about. And hopefully uh, that will help you uh, a little bit in your photographic journey. So just find my notes. There we go. Uh, so the <laughs> that is definitely a thing that we do on here, isn't it? Finding it notes. <laughs> so them um, printed out like the news readers. Yeah, yeah, a little like that. Yeah, it'd be absolutely awesome. So there's lots of different types of cameras. Uh, very, very popular nowadays is obviously things like the mobile phones. So, you know, there's no denying that uh, people take pictures on mobile phones now. And uh, it would it would be unfair for us not to mention them. So um, mobile phones have a great advantage, which is potentially they're always with you. So you're always going to have your mobile phone. You're always going to have it sort of in your pocket or in your bag, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. So, um, but also it's not only that is that the technology that we find generally inside mobile phones probably inspires some of the cameras that are actually coming out as well. So uh, we can certainly say that the uh, forefront of uh, technology advancement is definitely happening on the mobile phones. So. Um, and because they have to be quite clever uh, to to almost hide the other aspects of uh, what what they can't do, uh, what, so like tiny sensors. yeah, pretty much yeah, and uh, plastic lenses and, and things like that. So uh, yeah, so but we there's no there's no denying that uh, you know that you can take a really good photo on a mobile phone now, and probably a lot of that is down to the. Uh, uh, the computer technology inside of the phone really helping a long way. Especially uh, the colours and things like that. Yeah, 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 no, definitely. It, it really does help. Probably the, the main disadvantage, I would say, with a mobile phone um, is uh, probably the, the lack of zoom 
that you'll get on on a on a on one of these. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Zoom sort of as we go on through this training session. Um, but one of the one of the things is not having the Zoom capability uh, d does affect uh, your photography, uh, and generally just probably the quality is is not going to be as good as what you find from a proper camera or moving into a camera that you can take the lenses on and off as well. So I think the uh, thing about um, uh, camera phones is they have great screens and great cameras in combination. Yeah. But our issue is that we have a pro lab um, at the shop. People send us their pictures off WhatsApp or Facebook and they get printed and they look horrendous. Mm. Now, there's a lot of issues with WhatsApp and Facebook in terms of compression, which is understandable. But you only have to take a picture in your house um, when it's not a sunny day, for instance. So the light is not great. Um, and then you pinch and zoom and you go, ooh, that's not great. But the yeah. great thing about phones is the color looks like good. Like it, they accentuate the colors and put a filter on it and say, essentially that just makes them look really good straight out of the, the camera, um, which opposed to like a normal camera, yeah. um, it flattens your image significantly and it needs some editing to give it that pop. So I think that's probably one of the biggest things about mobile phones is they just look great straight away which is why people love them for Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, they, they certainly have a place if they're just saying on the small screen, basically, is is probably one of the things. But I think if you're getting into photography, um, I think you'd be doing your doing yourself out uh, if, if you're not potentially wanting to, you know, print an image. Uh, there's uh, We go on a lot about printing here at Cambrian, but there's no better feeling than printing a lovely photo and stick it up on the wall, knowing that you've actually taken it. So it is a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful feeling. Um, you, you can get things like uh, compact cameras. Uh, so compact cameras have come in uh, a lot of advancement sort of over the years. And I think it's driven from the mobile phones. So uh, the technology from the mobile phones has inspired these to, to become better or they'd be left behind. Um, and um, you can get some really good quality sort of compact cameras out there now. Um, obviously, one of the advantages is that they're still really, really small and neat. Uh, one of the other advantages is that um, you've got the, you've potentially got a lot of zoom built into these, even though that they're still small and neat as well. And you start to see some functionality on them which if you wanted to take photography a little bit further, uh, then, then you can do that as well. So they, they will have some form of uh, program mode, uh, aperture mode, shutter mode. Uh, I, if you're new to this, these things won't make sense at the time, but obviously we're going to help you with these. Um, That's what we're they, Indeed, indeed it is. So um, there's, there's a lot of where you can progress with these as well, which is really, really nice. Um, and the other great you... thing, yeah. oh, sorry. The other great <laughs> thing about um, the compact cameras um, and mobile phones is that immediacy of being able to share your images. And most compacts have Wi-Fi capability, so you can yes. instantly share your picture. It's true of the bigger cameras as well, but there tends to be more time taken because the quality of the image is much better in a DSLR or large, like a APS-C or a full frame. Uh, mirrorless so you, you're transferring really big files whereas the compacts tend not to have such big files so you can take a picture zoomed in of a bird on your compact and put it through to your uh, phone very quickly and share it on Facebook uh, or Instagram or whatever which I think is one of those great kind of almost hybrid sides of yeah. photography where the compact yeah. is the same size as your phone maybe a bit, big, bit bigger but you get that massive zoom um, and the weight isn't that bad. The battery lasts a good amount of time. You can charge it just like your mobile phone uh, with a USB cable, but then being able to share it to your phone so you can transfer it to the internet. I think that's kind of where the compact really comes into its own. Yeah, no, it certainly does, yeah. Um, moving up from uh, the compact camera is that you do have things like uh, yeah. this particular camera, um, which there's lots of different types of variations. So you might have heard mirrorless, as Joel has just said. Uh, you'll hear things like APS-IC, full frame, uh, loads of things thrown about, DSLR. 
but essentially it's lenses that you can change is is probably one of the main things that they call and some manufacturers they they use this they so they all call it ilc interchangeable lens camera um but paul's, uh, paul's getting uh, points for every uh, acronym he can come up with <laughs> yeah you keep all the weird job. letters yeah. <laughs> got yeah. a bingo card here i've almost <laughs> got a full house definitely definitely so um but the i mean the advantage of these is you're starting to get full control over what you want so whatever you want to do within your photographic journey uh, you're probably going to be able to do it with something that you can take the lenses on and off um also you've got the the quality backup generally we're seeing uh, an increase in quality when it comes to these and on top of that, with the interchangeability of the lenses means that you're never restricted into, you know, if you start to really focus on the type of photography that you're doing. So there's there's lenses that you can buy that would be suited for landscapes, suited for wildlife, macro. You, you can name every type of, you know, subcategory of photography and there would be a lens that would be better suited for it. So um, having something with interchangeability uh, really gives you the uh, the expansion to to learn uh, probably a lot quicker, a lot easier as well, I would say. Uh, but it gets you probably quicker to where you actually want to be in your photographic journey as well. Yeah, I think um, it's interesting to look at all the differences, but the similarities, which I think is what, at least for me, uh, amazes me about photography is um, you can capture an image, make an image, take a picture, whatever you want to call the phrase, um, with something that fits in your pocket very easily or something that requires a bag and, you know, like a neck strap and things. And essentially you're doing the same thing. You just have, some are better suited to certain subjects, just like a car yeah. you can choose a car that goes fast or a car that goes off-road or a car that fits in lots of people or that or you get kind of like that combination where you know you can fit a few people in it'll go over snow without any issue but it's not going to go up a mountain and i think that's the same with cameras is you've got to figure out what you think is most useful for you but equally if you don't want to spend any money and you've already got a smartphone in your pocket then you can already start getting into photography and that'll teach you a lot of what we're going to go through over the next few weeks and months is everything that we talk about in some form or another you can use on your smartphone or yeah. even a disposable camera we still sell disposable cameras 27 exposures um, and you can get it developed with us as well i think even that that's only going to cost you what like 10 pounds um to buy the camera i think to to just realize that there's almost no barriers to photography no you don't there have isn't to think, oh they've got a bigger camera so it means they can get better shots trust us we've seen plenty of people who spent thousands on cameras and we've seen people who've got cameras that are 10 15 years old and they're still getting better shots so it's got yeah. nothing to do with the gear which is hard for a photography shop to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we want to sell you gear but and, and i mentioned film then and we've we've not really mentioned film too much because obviously digital is probably the most popular but film if um if you've never tried it out and you're just starting out film could be fantastic as well because there's a there's a different process in terms of the whole physicality of photography with film but again it's the same process it's light and light is coming into the camera uh, and you're kind of essentially capturing that light um it's just not on a sensor it's on a, a piece of film but also film can be quite cheap to get into um you might be able to get a camera from a charity shop for a fiver or a tenner or you look on ebay and you can find some great deals on facebook marketplace or even our use section on our website film you can get black and white really cheaply um or you can get a uh, color film quite cheaply and we still process it and we can scan it in so you can treat it like a digital image but just know that if you've got a film camera floating around at home and you don't want to spend any money on a big fancy DSLR or mirrorless camera, crack on with film because you'll yeah. learn an awful lot with film just like you will with uh, digital. So that's just to make sure that people don't think we don't like film because we do. We love film. Yeah, no, we certainly do. <laughs> and uh, staying very uh, 
Staying very neutral across the board there as well, Joel. So <laughs> cover all bases. I like it. Um, oh, there's, there's other forms as well. Cyanotypes and all sorts. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you could go really off on the tangent. In there, so. Yeah. So hopefully that will make a little bit of sense uh, if you're, you know, looking at a camera and, you know, just weighing up those advantages. Uh, but I think the main thing that we want to put across is that, you know, even if you have something like a mobile phone, uh, you know, just crack on and use that. Uh, all the skills that we're teaching here, uh, you should be able to use your mobile phone for. Um, so, you know, you can help and move on with stuff like that. Um, obviously, if we're starting from the beginning with training and you know tutorials that we're doing online, um, I think one of the first fundamental things that uh, is a great tip to learn is to actually hold your camera correctly, uh, whether it be a mobile phone, a compact, or a you know interchangeable lens camera. Um, holding the camera is quite uh, an important part of it. Now. Uh, there's there is lots of different ways of holding cameras. <laughs> Sounds strange, but there we go. Um, and really, you know, you'll speak to some people and say, "Oh, you've got to hold it this way for this and this and that." It doesn't really matter. Once again, it's understanding why we're doing it. So if we know why we're holding this camera in a certain way, uh, then it starts to make a little bit more sense. And sometimes you might not need to hold it the conventional way. Of, uh, of holding a camera properly. Um, but it's just the understanding of why we're actually doing it. And uh, for this sort of tip, it's really good to uh, sort of use a photo as uh, what is sometimes referred to as a still. So um, to take a, a still photo, you need to be fairly still. <laughs> it's in the name. So um, what we're trying to do when we're taking a picture is to be still. and one thing that happens when we take pictures, and I will accentuate this with my big camera now. So if I'm holding this particular camera here and uh, I push down on this button, you can see that my whole hand is moving as I push down on this shutter button to take the picture. Um, slightly accentuating there, but all of these cameras mobile phones, compact cameras, ILCs, if there's a little bit of movement in situations where uh, it's not going to be kind, then you're going to get a blurry photograph. And this is what we're wanting to try and avoid. So first of all, let's have a look at the mobile phone. So if I hold the mobile phone up to try and take a picture of uh, Joel on the screen here, uh, then um, the picture taking button on my mobile phone is actually this side of the camera. Okay. So if I was trying to take a picture one handed, then and I was holding it this way. And if I push the screen, once again, you can actually see the phone moving, which I'm trying to avoid. So one thing that we want to do is we want to move the weight of holding the camera actually into our other hand, which is normally the left hand. So I'm going to move all the way into the left. And then I'm going to take the picture with the right. And this will really reduce the amount of movement that happens on the camera. And this is essentially the same thing that we're going to do as we move up as well. So going up onto the compact camera, we can see that I'm holding it in my left and I'm pushing it, the shutter button with the right. So all the weight of the camera is in the left hand and I'm just gently squeezing on the shutter button on top. Sorry. And as I move up onto the interchangeable lens system, I'm doing the same again. So all the weight is going into the left hand and I'm pushing down on the right. <coughs> Sorry, Joel, just you for a second. <laughs> And also don't cough when you're trying to take a picture. It's awful for uh, uh, reducing that um, that blurriness. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's one of those things where you don't realise it at first, but the more you get into photography, the more you realise that the way you stand and hold yourself definitely will help, um, especially when you're trying to get slower shutter speeds. We'll learn um, in the next few weeks that the, the stiller you can stand, the the better your exposure can be because you're not having to to compromise certain parts of your exposure to 
uh, hold it still. So I think that's uh, yeah. something very Thanks. important to understand. So. Thanks for the save there, Joel. <laughs> it's why we like having both of us on the screen, isn't it? So we know it's some Paul's point. Paul's not very good at sign language but, whilst he's coming. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, the main thing <clears throat> is that we've sort of looked at shifting the weight away from the picture taking hand. That's all that we're doing. So whether that be the left or the right hand, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you're holding the camera like this or like this. As long as you feel that you have the weight in your left. To me, a lot of the weight is actually sitting on my thumb now. So you'll see a lot of people actually switch the camera around. So it feels a lot more comfortable. And what I say to people is that try and find a comfortable way. Don't worry about taking pictures, but just try and find a comfortable way of holding the camera in the left hand, which feels a little bit odd because you've got this lovely big grip on the side here, which you think you'd want to love to wrap your hands around. Uh, and it's the same with a lot of uh, compact cameras and interchangeable lenses that you have this lovely grip where what you want to be doing is actually trying to hold the camera quite nicely in the left to the point where, you know, I've, I've got the camera. I'm not going to let it go. That's, that's the trick that we've found is uh, trying to shift that weight across uh, into the, the non picture taking hand. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Then, obviously, moving forward from there, another big thing that takes, um, that will change the way that your picture looks a lot is uh, potentially using uh, different lenses, different zooms. So, uh, once again, things like mobile phones. Um, most, some of the modern mobile phones will actually have multiple lenses on now. Uh, which is uh, yeah, which is a new thing that we're seeing. So, so I think soon we'll be seeing like seven, eight, nine, probably different lenses on the back of these potentially. There was that one that had seven or nine, and it was like all over the back, different sizes. Really, I thought that really was just bad. like a, a meme or something. No, that was no, actually it a was real legit. thing. Wow. So yeah. Um, so. Um, you know you can you can get different lenses uh, on on these uh, on these things as well um so yeah mobile phones are typically you've got uh, fixed lenses okay and what fixed means is that they they don't zoom okay uh so if you tend to find if you've only got sort of like one lens on the back of these they'll just be you know one sort of look that you're going to achieve uh, and and that's it so with these, I've got three little buttons on my phone that I can push and it will change between the different lenses. Once again, if you've been used to taking pictures on your mobile phone, you'd have, you'd have seen this. So um, one thing that you do get with moving up onto something like the uh, compact cameras is that uh, these do have a zoom, okay? Now these are normally measured in uh, what they like times something. So they might be times 20, times 30, you know, whatever it is. Or 125, um, like the Nikon yeah, B1000. Yeah, exactly. So something <laughs> ridiculous, Mental. basically. Um, uh, the, the, the numbering behind this, uh, if anyone's interested, is just the smallest millimeter number times by the biggest millimeter number. And that's, that's how you get your times basically. So, uh, that, that's how it's, uh, that's how it's worked out. Um, so, um, you know, mainly what you'll find is that time zoom is going to bring you more zoomed in. So th the more you increase this number, the more it will zoom in to the picture that you're actually taking. So, Briefly, um, going back to the mobile phone, um, there yes. are there is the functionality to zoom on mobile phones, um, yes. uh, isn't it? Even though they're fixed, you can zoom. But that's digital zoom um, or a combination of it switching between the lenses and it just doesn't tell you. So I would personally suggest that you don't use the digital zoom unless you really need to because essentially you can get the same thing by cropping uh, later on. So you can keep a, a better quality image initially and then you can go and crop in later to get that perspective because that's essentially what the lens is doing is changing your perspective so yeah 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 um so you know uh 
you're going to get different perspectives, which we're going to talk about a little bit when we go into the millimeter sort of focal length, um, which is something that we probably need to mention as well, is that um, once again, it, like like anything, something got named at some point. So, you know, whether it be uh, uh, an, an inch or a mile, you know, uh, I'm drinking a cup of water. You know, we always have sort of measurements in something. And typically the way that we measure zoom uh, is that you'll you'll hear it millimeter focal length okay now there is a boring science behind this as well so it's so uh, it's to well it's to do with the distance between your sensor or your film with the convergence lens in your lens basically so the bit that flips it round but it's not really important uh, because uh, once again the, the bigger this number goes the more zoomed in we're going to be and i think that's the important bit when we start to look at millimeter fo millimeter focal length um, i thought you were going to go full geek on us then paul and pull out a blackboard and start drawing no, like, cause we don't need to because we don't need to it's um it, it's just something that we that that we just know and it's it, once again, we all know roughly how much a cup of water is. You know, it, it's coming back to that technology. It's just like, well, who, you know, who, who made cup? You know, wh who defined what that was? You know, who defined what an inch was um, in, in general measurements? It, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's just a case that we know uh, what, it's actually, uh, that's what, what it's actually going to do. So the higher the number this millimeter becomes, um, uh, the more zoomed in uh, that we we become as well. So um, we refer to lenses once again on compact cameras, mobile phones, interchangeable lens systems uh, in other terminology as well, just to make things a little bit more confusing. Um, so you might hear what they call standard length. Uh, you might hear something called wide angle, or you might hear something called telephoto. Okay. Um, once again, we're going to refer this back to millimeters uh, focal length because that's how we measure things. Um, so we'll probably start off with uh, what is considered standard and what standard actually means. So standard zoom is, well, really no zoom at all. So it's what we see with our naked eye. So uh, no perspective has absolutely changed or anything like that. And this happens at what they call a uh, 50 millimeter, 35 millimeter equivalent. So once again, we use a terminology that is related back to 35 millimeter film. So it all relates sort of back to, you know, what was standard at one point. So uh, 50 millimeter is what they considered standard and there's, there's basically no zoom that actually happens on here. With wide angle, um, this is when the number is lower than 50 millimeter. And what we start to happen when we use a wide angle lens is we actually start to push away our subject. So what starts to happen is that uh, we, what would normally be standard is actually being pushed away from us. So as if you were looking through the camera. <coughs> well, I thought Paul was going to start doing a, a mime impression then with his hands. I thought you were going to wear white gloves and go. <laughs> I've got some white gloves somewhere. Like this. So if you, if, you were looking, if you were looking in real life and you were looking through a lens that was wider angle, when you're looking through the camera or your phone, whatever it will be, everything everything will actually seem further away because we're pushing it away from us. But what also happens because of this is that we're going to get a lot more in as well. So we push things away, but we get a lot more in at the same time. So this is great for things like, uh, well, it's used a lot in landscape photography, uh, also in things like photojournalism as well, because we can get really close up architecture. Nice. Once again, yeah, anything. Yeah. So anywhere where you want to get in, you know, a lot of things, if you can push things away from you, then you're going to get more of it in. There is something to bear in mind, though, because 
we are changing, as Joel said before, he mentioned the word uh, perspective. And what we see in real life is actually changing. And we can use this to our advantage. So you can use it as an effect that will change. I'm going to cough again. <laughs> <coughs> the problem with filming live, um, it will change the way that things look. You can use this to your advantage, uh, but it can also sometimes be a disadvantage because if you see something in real life and you think, wow, that looks amazing, you're actually seeing it at that sort of standard focal length, so yeah. at the equivalent of 50 mil. Cool. Um, and if you're trying to recreate it at something that is wider, it may not have the same feel, it may not have the same look. So that's something just to bear in mind through your learning process is that sometimes what you see in real life doesn't necessarily turn out on camera. And one of the things is with that is potentially the zoom that you're actually using as well. I suppose so that's, that's where panoramas can come in, isn't it? Being able to fit in more at a, a focal length that is more pleasing. Um, yeah. Well, go back to uh, the show when um, Peter was showing us how he did panoramas at 85 millimeters. Like that was a really interesting effect because you got more in, but you weren't pushing the subject away from the camera, which yeah. is where it, the, like the creativity of understanding photography and how lenses and cameras interact with one another to be able to make the most of that. I think that's that was really in, interesting. So yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a really it was a really good look. And uh, once again, you can go back and check all of our uh, videos that we've done from uh, the previous shows as well. And uh, take some of the things that uh, we've gone on there as a learning experience as well so we um, put one of those things in Paul, you know where we can point at the box you can, like the you can only put them in at the end can't you so uh, maybe. Uh, yeah <laughs> so um obviously the uh, on the other side of the uh, wide angle so going on the opposite side of this what we consider standard uh, is going up into uh, the telephoto range and it does exactly the opposite of what wide angle will do. So what this is going to do is it's going to bring your subject closer to you. So rather than uh, pushing it away, it's going to bring it closer. Um, and this is what we normally perceive as being sort of zoomed in. Um, so using a telephoto lens, so anything that's above 50 millimeter is going to bring in uh, subjects closer to you. Um, once again, it will potentially change the perspective of things, but in the opposite way of what we've seen with the uh, with the wide angle. So it will shift everything, so it will make everything seem, well, potentially bigger. Um, so anything that is in the background, it will bring it sort of towards your subject, as it were. So, uh, But it's something from a learning experience that you really want to play about with. Uh, so this week, what we want you to play about with is finding something that is, you know, a, a real comfortable way of holding your camera. So making sure that it feels nice in your hand, trying to be as still as possible when you take that photo. It, it's really good practice for anything that you're doing in the future. Um, Something with but, that part as well, um, to understand, or it's quite useful to remember is, when you're out walking or you've done some exercise or you've picked up something heavy then sometimes it can be good just to kind of calm down for a few yeah. seconds or a minute calm or, down. yeah <laughs> and um and just compose yourself before you compose your image i think that's yeah. uh, quite important because um especially if you if you're going for a walk in the evening uh, you want to capture the sunset and you've been walking a bit and you're a bit worn out so it's been a warm day etc just take a breath calm down because your camera is going to want to have a slower shutter speed uh, because there's not going to be as much light so just being able to give yourself and your camera a chance um in lower light conditions that kind of importance of holding uh, the camera still becomes really important um and also i think personally that kind of calming yourself down and then taking your shot helps give you a bit more time, releases the pressure as you're looking around for the image that you can see and kind of finding that image that you would like. Um, it's very rather than kind of just bringing it to your camera and going bang and carrying on. I think like that, that just being a bit more calm and thoughtful about 
what you're trying to capture is a uh, well at least for me is important so. yeah yeah so it's like has it, it does two things for you there doesn't it Joel? so uh but just taking the time uh you know just to find a nice steady thing and once again um it does you don't need to steady yourself in your hand you know you can use multiple things as well so you know if you wanted to i mean currently i'm i'm leaning on on my desk so just leaning on the desk is better than than not leaning on the desk so it's going to give me a little bit more stability so just finding nice ways of uh supporting the camera holding it in a nice and way posts, bricks brick walls anything yeah, sandbags, whatever you, whatever you like. Sandbags. <laughs> yeah. You're obviously going to take a sandbag up a mountain with you, aren't you? No? You tell me I'm crazy. Yeah. Um, Maybe a bean bag. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the other thing that would be really cool for you guys to try is, uh, you know, playing about with the zoom. So, you know, taking a picture that's uh, within that wide angle range, uh, taking a picture within that standard range, and then zooming into a picture to get into that telephoto range and really play about with, uh, and, and looking at back at the pictures and seeing, you know, you could take a picture in the same place at the three different lengths, three different focal lengths that we've, uh, that we've talked about. And, uh, you know, seeing what differences uh, that will give, uh, give your picture. So what I find interesting really try. as well is choosing your focal length. It might be wide or um, standard or telephoto and then walking forwards or yeah. backwards. And um, so you see the effect and then do what you said and stay in one place and zoom in and zoom out to see the way that the image changes and the way that your foreground interacts with your background and how that perspective change can be used really creatively. Like one thing yeah. that um, I learned um, a while ago, um, well, years ago, but something that stuck with me is even on a compact camera where you've got the functionality to zoom, um, stand as far back as possible when you're taking pictures of people even a group shot it seems counterintuitive when you've got a, a wide angle uh, but try and step back as far as you can and zoom in a bit and, and help that perspective take an image that's more pleasing of somebody's face and also yeah. another key tip don't put people on the edge of a wide angle lens they won't thank you for it <laughs> <laughs> but i think once again it's uh experiment you know, have a play, you know, uh, try and find out why you shouldn't put people on the end of a wide angle lens and see what happens, you know. Uh, and, you know, if, if if it did work, then why? And, you know, how cool is that? And, you know, all those little things. So uh, really just play, find your own style uh, of, of what you like doing. Uh, though it's great to look at these tips and tricks that we're you know, teaching you as well, but find your own rhythm as well, you know. Um, so it's, it's why we do that a lot, isn't it? You know, it's just yeah. like, you know, this is what, you know, it should be, but don't worry about it too much, you know. Yeah, we don't want it. to, yeah, we don't want to live by rules alone. We want to kind of suggest things to you where we say, oh, it might be good for you to do it this way, but equally find out why. Um, and you might yeah. find it a different way. Or you might find a way that you think, oh, I think this looks more interesting. It's more about what I yeah. wanted to create that way. And, and that's something that's I think really, really important with photography. And it's something we want you to understand from these tutorials is that photography is for you. Um, and yeah. you do photography the way that you want to do it, the way that pleases you. Um, and, and make sure that you're not being held uh, back by other people's uh, viewpoints on what photography is or isn't there's a lot yeah. of people and there's some very very good photographers and they'll tell you this is how you should take a picture listen to them for sure because they've learned a lot of lessons but equally travel your own journey of photography and say do you want to do you know what? i'm going to take portraits at 12 millimeters because that's what i think looks interesting or yeah. i'm going to take portraits at 300 millimeters because i think that looks interesting because ultimately that might be your style and that might be something that pleases you creatively and and we just want to help you understand and kind of encourage you and push you to try different things and then you'll learn because that's the way that everybody learns is by trying out 
So we can give you a few tips, send you in a, a direction, you can try it out, and then you might say, do you know what, those guys really helped, or, you know what, I tried it, but it didn't work out, and that's yeah, fine. Yeah, exactly, yeah. We won't be offended. <laughs> I mean, Even if certain people say no, <laughs> we're wrong. Portraiture is a, a great one of defying what should and shouldn't be as well, because, you know, if uh, before there was, you know, the the mass sort of social media sort of thing that we, that we saw, um, and I think I was part of that coming in as well um is that uh, you know portrait photographers we shoot, well you always shoot on a telephoto lens to take a picture of somebody and then obviously we we started to see digital cameras come into it there was there was social media that started coming into things there was a very young generation of people taking pictures of themselves which have now to become known as selfies and it's not only the young generation that do it but once again, these were always done at very, very wide angle lenses. And, you know, it, once again, we, we look to the youth to, you know, see progression. And, you know, they found that, you know, if I hold the camera here and tilt this and tilt my head this way and this way, and I can, I can get a really- pounds, 20 pounds uh, loss of weight. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, they, they broke down, you know, that sort of, uh, uh, I, I don't know what the word is, but uh, the like rules. Uh, yeah, the rules, um, you know, the constraints of, you know, what a typical Accepted sort of, practice. Yeah, <laughs> the, what, a, what a head and shoulders should be, um, you know, and, you know, it became almost the new norm, you know, that this is now what is now known as a new portrait and kind of going the opposite way now, or oh, use a, a telephoto lens to be different on portraiture, you know. So um, it's it's a case of, you know, just have a really good play and, uh, you know, experiment really. Uh, but a zoom, uh, a zoom and, you know, the way that you hold the camera is, is a really big part into uh, the start of your photography journey. For sure. There we go. So I don't know if we've got any related comments to uh, the training section or whether it's just people disagreeing with me or telling me that I'm wrong. <laughs> we've got Stuart and he says, thanks for my prints last week. Looks the business in brackets. I think so anyway. I'm sure it does. And ultimately, it's only what you think that matters. Unless you want to sell them, then it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. <laughs> Um, Ian says, hi guys, sorry I'm late, didn't set alarm on my watch, no problem at all, good to see you, glad you could join us. Rob says, hi guys, I've just bought an Onduster 50 uh, two, minus 2 with a M42 mount adapter to my Leica T, looking forward to trying this out. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. Send us some shots of what it looks like, both how it's all combined, but also the shots that you get from it, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, Steve says, uh, late to the party, good evening. Better late than never, Steve. Great to see you. Uh, good evening to you too. And Graham, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too, Graham. I uh, hope you're keeping well uh, and staying out of trouble. So That's brilliant. So, uh, yes, we'll be uh, back again doing some more training. So um, yeah. if you're re-watching this video, then uh, you can just move on to the next one. There'll be a, or well, hopefully, uh, a playlist uh, yeah. going on somewhere. Uh, that you'll be able to carry on watching with the episodes. Uh, if you're watching on our live show, Photography Out Loud, then uh, next week uh, we'll be having a break from the training and we'll be having our special guest in, Paul Sanders, who will be going over the uh, what, what, it was a, the image challenge, the project, wasn't it? Yeah, the, yeah. yeah the project. We had three different, three different um, briefs um, yeah, as part um, of the whole project. So, yeah, it was really cool. good we'll be talking about that next week so um any final thought for this uh before we end no Joe? no i just um have a great weekend um i don't know if you guys are going to be watching the the rugby if you are enjoy um and also don't forget to get your camera out and give it a go give some of the uh ideas we gave you today a go um, and next week maybe um put them in the comments so we can see what you're doing it'd be great to see uh, what you guys are achieving so um, and yeah, just have a great weekend. Yep. As always, uh, please make sure that you uh, like and share our videos. The more you do that, the more it helps us uh, spread the word about what we do here. So that'd be lovely. And uh, until next week, we'll see you then. Bye-bye for now. Cheers. Bye now.